right, it is time to take the RV to the transmission shop. So that's where we're going. So we only have one phone with uh, with a SIM card in it. So that's why Tammy's up there leading the way using the, the GPS and the phone. And I'm back here following her. So we gotta be sure we don't get separated. Of course, if we do get separated, it'll probably be pretty easy to find the big ugly rolling turd. After all, it is both big and ugly. So there is that. Actually, at the moment, in addition to being big, ugly, and rolling, the turd is also leaky. So it's a big, ugly, leaky rolling turd, which is particularly graphic. Watch out, bicyclist. Big, ugly, leaky rolling turd coming through. I think we have things as situated as we can get them. Have the propane turned off, all the little charger thingies taken out that, you know, have a little LED that might be drawing power down. There should be no need for anybody to come back here, but it's kind of impossible for us to completely unload the RV, which is a little sketchy. Leave Basically leaving your house with a, a mechanic. I'm always so skeptical about mechanics and doctors and really just people in general <laughs> but what can you do Tambi yeah how do you feel about this situation I don't like leaving it <laughs> don't like leaving it it is a little weird Molly what do you think I don't want to leave it I know but we gotta have the transmission working right yeah. you know what I mean it'll be okay Right? Yeah, it should be fine. So, so in there is where that that main seal is. Yeah, huh? this is the main seal right there. Can you can you tell from all this fluid that is that a clue that that's leaking, or is it coming from the the torque at. converter? That's what I'm looking at right now. Huh. So I see, uh, so you got a circle pattern. Yeah. So, so where where it's been spraying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Would it be, uh, do you pressure test these or anything like that to see if they're, if it might be the torque converter itself yeah. that's leaking? Yeah, we, we can pressure test them and huh. uh, I'm just looking for evidence. And what I see, I see some light grooves. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at right there. And it looks like it starts grooving in a little bit. 
What I'm going to do is put a new seal. I'm going to pull the pump out and change this oil ring, put the bushing so this is tighter. Hmm. transmission is out and they're going to be replacing that front main seal the pan gasket a few other gaskets in there and that should that should actually fix the leak um, however my work is not going to be done because even once I get the RV back I'm going to be installing a transmission fluid cooler and a temperature gauge that way you know for one thing it'll keep the transmission cooler and the, for the other thing, I'll be able to actually have an idea of what the transmission temperature is, where currently, with the way it's set up, I have no idea. It's just kind of a gamble. You're hoping it's not getting too hot. But anyways, that's what's going on. I do want to kind of brag about those guys at the transmission shop. Even though the job isn't completely done yet, um, you know, they've been very accommodating. Uh, at first, when I asked them if I could film, you know, inside their shop, they were a little weirded out by it. You know, they've obviously never had anything like that happen before. And I can understand that. I wouldn't necessarily want somebody with a camera poking around back there for, you know, liability reasons, if nothing else. But, you know, they did accommodate. And they were very, they seemed to be very good, knowledgeable, capable guys. So... You know, I'm feeling pretty good about this. And as it stands, I think I might actually get away from this repair for less than $1,000. Um, you know, I was thinking it was going to be quite a bit more than that. And we're obviously now not out of the woods yet, but we'll see how it goes. Feeling pretty good about it. All right, just settled the bill. Uh, the damage ended up being about $930, which... You know, sounds like a lot, but honestly, I'm I'm kind of relieved to get out of this as cheap as that. You know, concerning transmissions and drivetrains, especially in a larger vehicle like this, you know, that cost could have really been much, much higher. So hopefully we're good to go now. Now I just got to install that transmission cooler. Okay, here we are. The RV is back at Linden Marina at Lake Utah. And I guess that was about a half hour drive to get it here. And everything under here, let's see if I can get you a view at the bell housing there. Everything is looking nice and dry. I don't see any leaks. Uh, everything ran good, shifted good, seemed normal getting it here. So I would have to chalk this repair up as being a success. Now all that's left for us to do before we can hit the road again is to wait till the transmission cooler gets here and the temperature readout gauge and get those installed. So still got a little bit of a project before we're completely out of the weeds and have confidence to travel again, but we're getting there. Since you were installing this transmission sensor and gauge, you were most likely the owner of an RV with an overheating transmission. Serves you right for not buying a sailboat. Should have bought a sailboat instead of the RV, you dumb sap sucker. <laughs>